Greetings, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. This is our, um, actually, this is going to be, we're pre-recording this because Saturday, uh, Josh and his dad will be journeying up north, so keep them in prayer. And uh, I'll be back, but I won't have anyone to do the live, so we're doing it live tonight on Thursday for Shabbat on Saturday. Uh, please don't judge me. Don't pass judgment. Um, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Uh, and uh, I still love him and love the word. But when things come up, we got to fulfill those things also. So we would just want to mention to you uh, keep us in prayer, keep them in prayer as they journey, and uh, keep me in prayer as I stay behind with the spoil, and uh, I'll have fun, because I'll get to eat more than once, because two of them are leaving, so I'll have their portion, <laughs> and that'll be a good thing. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for tuning in. As you know, um, the 47th president is Donald and I'm not sure what his last name is, but I think there's a Trump sound in scripture. So um, I'm giving all you rapturous um, shame on you that you were thinking and it came to pass. He became the leader and uh, we're still here. And I believe we're going to continue to be here. Some of you that keep teaching your people the rapture theory Go back and read the scripture because there is no theory. See, theory comes from Thessalonians and theology and uh, what's the other when these guys are really smart? They're called, um, oh my God, I'm, I just seen the word go past me, but uh, they're not Thessalonians. That's the name of the book, but they're Thea, Thea for theologians. Excuse me? Oh, no, I just said something to you. But you said something. I was saying it was either, he's agreeing with you and saying it was either uh, Thessalonians, Theocracy, or another one. I just forgot. Yeah. So theologians are the term where theology, and then you got to remember theology is part of theocracy. And theocracy is uh, one step higher than democracy, malarkey, and hierarchy, all the archies. And it's still the realm of man and carnal uh, truth. And this is why some of us are waiting for the uh, ushering in the, the Trump. And it does say that the Trump will sound and then the dead in Christ shall rise. But I teach that that doesn't mean rapture. That means those that died to self rise up in an ascension order, rise up in a love for their master, Yahuwah, son's name, Yahusha, Yahusha. And so in doing so, it opens up the uh, new calendar because we're, some of us are following the, the, <laughs> the covenant calendar that is a day covenant calendar. And a lot of the things in, in scripture, they use dawn, the dawning of the day, or the morning, or the term day. And you have to understand that's part of the calendar. If you don't have this teaching, you're not going to go to hell. If you don't have this teaching, you're not going to lose your salvation. Uh, but what it does do, it reinforces the foundation that you and I have been learning because progressive revelation helps you to defeat trickery, <laughs> doubt, fear, unbelief, strong delusion, all the terms that you'll read in Scripture that comes through the spiritual conditioning of darkness. 
most of us, and uh, there's going to be, you know, this may hurt some of you, but it wasn't intended to hurt you. It was intended to cause you to press in more. But if, like, for instance, I've read the Bible and I know scripture, but I forget where it's at, the address. So when I say it, it's in there. And uh, so what I have to redo is go back and start reading it all over again from an outer court mindset, and then I'll get it because the scriptures are in me. I know them. Uh, most of the terms and shortcuts and shorts that you see come up, I have pages of listings of 30, 60, 100, the blade, the ear, the full carn in the ear, uh, love, <laughs> faith, hope, and love, uh, righteousness, peace, and joy, all the threes. And what's interesting is I refer back to them the mystery of iniquity. Iniquity means twisted teachings. Iniquity means false teachings. Iniquity means taking a truth and putting your own carnal idea on it. So it's still a truth, but it's it's mixed, and that's what iniquity is, a mixture. Iniquity is the guttle sound, the g, g, g. And in Scripture, when you study it, this is why most of us preachers, we teach against the law, but we teach on tithes and offerings. I don't need to argue with you. If you love him, you'll keep the commandments. But since you don't know him, even though we preach on love and unity and love and understanding and all the terms that are in the scripture, um, and one of the great moves is in Second Thessal. No, no, Second. No, First Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Let's go to First Chronicle. No, no, not even First Chronicle. Let's go to the New Testament in in uh, First Corinthians two. And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Yahuwah. For I determined not to know anything among you except Yeshua Mashiach and him crucified. <laughs> and then there was a scripture, I believe, I'm going to see if I could, uh, if, hmm, if I can find it. He, I think it's in Mark, at Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah, I think it's. But he was making reference where he tells the disciples, don't go telling nobody that I'm Jesus Christ. Now, what happens to me is I'm a revelator, so when I read the scripture, something comes alive, and then when I read and speak it, it I'm speaking it from the spirit of Yahuwah, the Father, since he is a spirit. And he was telling his disciples not to let others know that that's who he said it, who he was. And he said, don't go telling anybody that. So what I'm doing is I'm turning pages because um, this is something that I'm leaving behind as a legacy to all of you that are listening, to all of you that study. Uh, the Father shines his light on all of us. And then there's times that he focuses on one or two or three or four because you have to know these things. And so I uh, see like at the end of something, I'll get the verse and then the following week I'll let you know where it's at because it came up on my spirit. See, it's a spirit. It's not a verse in a chapter because the Father don't talk like that. But we, you and I, were taught that way, so that's how we convey. Excuse me? Matthew chapter 16, verse 20. Matthew 16, verse 20. Okay, let's go to Matthew 16, verse 20. And uh, 16, verse 20. Yes, there it is. So in verse 16, Chapter 16, you know the the uh, the common 
phraseology and scriptures that we talk about, homologia is a clean word. It's a Greek word that means to speak the same things. So if Yeshua spoke it and then it's in red ink, then you and I were taught that's Jesus talking. So here in verse 17, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. He's talking about Peter. And then he says, For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And then you have to ask the question to yourself. Has God asked you the question? And then as you're reading and you make it personal, then you'll be accountable to constantly stay in the word because that's where the Baruch comes. See, we've been taught blessing and you've been given for years. You've been doing everything rightfully and you still haven't received your bountiful blessing. Why? Because the Father can't bless what he didn't say he'll bless. He said, I will Baruch. So then if you change it from blessing to Baruch, you'll, the scripture testifies itself. So here in verse 19, he goes on and he says, And I say also unto thee. So now he's telling, you know, verse 17, he's speaking to Simon Barjona. Verse 18 he switches from Simon Barjona, <laughs> and he says, I say un also unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my ecclesia. Your, uh, I will build my set-apart ecclesia, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. This is in the scripture. Jesus the Christ. Don't tell anybody because that wasn't his name. His name was Yeshua Mashiach. But of course, we don't want to believe that because we only take what we want to believe. That's why we say we're not under the law. We're New Testament saints. Well, if you were a New Testament saint, then you would be obedient to him and restore his name. But since we don't really believe it, that's why we don't. So look at the next verse, verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. Of course, you know if you've been studying, the word Lord there means Baal. This shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, This is Yeshua Mashiach, saying to Peter the disciple, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for you savor not the things that be of Yah, but those that be of man. He opens up and rebukes Peter by saying, Satan, be th <laughs> thou art an offense to me. <laughs> you savor the things of man. So he equated Satan as being connected to man. And in doing so, this is where the plot thickens as we go to Scripture. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of Yahuwah in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which Yahuwah ordained before the world unto our glory. The word glory there is esteem. 
verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified Yahuwah Elohim of glory. But as it is written, <coughs> eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Yahuwah has prepared for them that love him. But Yahuwah has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of Yahuwah. The Spirit and the day, the covenant calendar of the day, are synonymous terms that when you understand that you're walking in the day as children of the day, and you'll, we'll show you that in Thessalonians, so then you are, you are being illuminated to walk in the day. The day has no, oh my goodness, the day has no dealings with darkness. Darkness has no say in the matter. That's why the scripture says that the darkness could not comprehend the light. But light and day are synonymous. But yet, light and day could also be divided or merismost or meklaka and meklaket because the word divide comes from those two words. When you say meklaka or meklaket, you must have been looking at the word divide to come up with that Hebrew word. When you do, then you understand the illumination of the scripture becomes alive and you are walking in the light of your understanding. Remember we read, I think it was Psalms 119, 160 something. Uh, I'm going to turn there to see if, if uh, I, you know, I venture to uh, hopefully find it. <laughs> Ooh, shalala. Okay, 119, 119, 119, okay. The entrance of the word bringeth light and understanding, 119, okay? 30, 119, 130. See, I remembered those from years ago and other script, but this one, because it's fresh in my spirit, it comes up on me. Verse 25, 125, I want you to hear this. And, and <laughs> let me give you a little bit more daylight. When you read Psalms 119, it has the 22 letters all through the Psalms 119, from verse 1 all the way to, uh, <laughs> let me see, where do I go to? 176. That's the top from 169 to 176. The top. It started way over here. If you go back to 119, 1, it says, Baruch are the undefiled in the way who walk in the Torah of Yahuwah. Blessed Baruch are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. They also do do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart, when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments, I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. And then in verse 9, it's the bet. So you had the Aleph, first letter of the Aleph Tav, and then the bet, the second one. Okay, and as you... <laughs> I will delight myself, verse 16, in thy statues. I will not forget thy word. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your Torah. 
I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not the commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the longing that it had unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. This is why it's so important to re redirect you and I in learning the proper word. Homologia to speak the same things. Isaiah says the word debar. Debar. If you know what debar means, well, then you're lining up to the scripture that the Father said because of, <laughs> according to one of the verses in Exodus, the Father is a spirit and he speaks to the spirits of men. The spirit of man. Okay, so let's go on now. Let's go back to uh, Corinthians in verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Yahuwah has prepared for them that love him. But Yahuwah has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of Yahuwah. Spirit and day are synonymous. They go hand in hand. The greater light and the lesser light. One's the Father, one's the Son. Why? Because they both bear witness to the light. But you need a revelation of that. But most of us analytically and then... Uh, <laughs> theologically will summons and teach others what it all means and you're right at that level but to go on the day is breaking through and the father wants you and I not to be ignorant because the enemy knows the word also if the princes of this world would have known not to crucify him because of what would have happened, the results of it, they would have never did it. Let's read on. Verse 10. But Yahuwah has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of Yah. For what man knoweth, verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of man except save the spirit of man which is in him? The spirit of man is in him. The spirit of man is the one that was dormant. When the father set in us a seed of that spirit, the only way it was going to come alive is through the pressure of finding that you had no identity. Once you begin to look and find your identity, that's why we are to teach the hears, those that have ears to hear and eyes to see, the reformation of his word way back in the beginning. In the beginning, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the whole covenant calendar, the day covenant calendar is found there. And that's why I'm taking my time. I'm building line upon line, precept upon precept, so that all of you will get it all of those that are tuning in to H2HDI, I'm not trying to lose you. I'm not trying to give you something that's brand new. It's been hidden. It's been a mystery. That's why the book of Ephesians talks about <laughs> fellowshipping the mystery. Okay, let's go on. Ah, I love this. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of this world, but we have received the Spirit, which is of Yah. Yah. Y-A-H or Yahuwah or yod hey wah hey. Okay? They all mean the same. They all are light unto you. This is why Psalms 119, 130 spoke about the entrance of the word. Oh, let's go back there. You got to see that. You got to memorize this. You got to work on this because this is how revelation, revelation knowledge just, doesn't just fall from heaven. It's you working in what you're working out. That's why he says work out your 
own salvation with fear and trembling. If you don't work it in, it can't work out. And you could speak any of the languages that you have, you've heard. <laughs> any of the languages. Hallelujah. Okay. Psalms 119, 130. The entrance of thy words gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Thy name? Why thy name? Because the name was back in the beginning. In the first... Ooh. In the first, in the beginning, Bereshit, the whole kingdom message, the whole covenant, new covenant kingdom message was hidden in verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's why I'm taking you back to these verses so you can see how they join each other. The Va connector. Connecting the first verse, the last verse. Connecting the Aleph and the Bet. Connecting. Okay, now look at verse 13. Or verse 133. I'm sorry, 13. <laughs> Order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. And see, we don't teach iniquity because you lost sight of it. You think iniquity is sin. Yes, it is. But if you really study the word iniquity like Joshua and I did, we studied and we searched it and went deep to find out that it was a g sound. And the g sound was iniquity, twisted teachings, a three-stranded chord that was You know how to braid. You know how to braid. So you take three strings, three threads, <coughs> a ball of yarn that the cats play with, and you integrate it. Okay, you braid it. And that's what <laughs> iniquity has that meaning. Iniquity is twisted teachings, and you'll find, I used to know the number and the whole thing, but it's been years that I've, you know, and it's not my fault. I'm just blaming it on uh, Josh because he's my protege. When I die, he will run with the, hallelujah, with the mantle like Elijah with Eliza. And so I give him this, and then he studies it, and he memorizes. He knows thousands of scriptures. You just don't take time to talk to him and learn from him. But he'll astound you if you do. Uh, I open the door that you could ask him questions. If he don't know, then you could point him out and go, shame on you, Josh. You should. You're called an elder. And I say this publicly because all of us have to give an account to Yahuwah. This is why I fear when I sit here and I give you a verse and then I say to myself, Father, help me to convey your truth, not mine. So here again, we're, we've gone through some of the powerful truths in the scripture, okay? We read 119, 130. Now go back with me to, <laughs> oh, yeah. Go back with me to Thessalonians and we're done. Uh, did you guys get that verse that Josh said in 16, 17, 18, and 19? No? Okay, let's go back over to see if we uh, missed it. Because it was a verse in 18, 19, and 20. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. That's why... I try to tell you his name is not Jesus the Christ. His name is Yeshua Mashiach. From the very beginning in Genesis chapter 1 and then John 1.1, 1, 1, they both bear witness 
of his name. And some of you hate to hear, hate to study, but if you would study the name Jesus, you would find that his name. I think uh, Josh on Tuesday night or Wednesday night, he shared on Yahuwah or Yahshua, from Jesus to Yahshua. Um, and I told him to go ahead and use the term Isus because Isus is the Greek term. It wasn't the scriptural term that the Father gave him. That's why he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because he came in the name of the Father. That's why there's a parable that he said, if, if I came in another man's name, he you would receive. But I came in the Father's name, and you didn't receive me. But if another came, you'd receive him. What he was saying is, we are to unify his name because you're kept by his name. There was no J in our grammar. There was no J in our English Hebrew words that defined the term Yahuwah and Yahshua. Yahuwah Father, Yahshua Son. And then when you study and you become more acquainted with the word, it even changes the sound, the frequency, because the Father's teaching you his name but a lot of people know his name but don't know how to teach you the revelation of his name and this is where i get scared for those kind of people whether you're spanish italian french greek hebrew german you have to give an answer so you can't just study his name and think that's good enough for me because it is good enough for you, but he wants you to be able to tell somebody. All right, let's go. Let's go to Timothy. We're going to go to First Thessalonians chapter five, and we're almost done. I'm landing this plane. First Thessalonians chapter five. One, two, three, four, and five. Watch this. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Okay, so this is Paul telling the, the saints in Thessalonica. He says to them to abstain from evil appearances because you don't need for me to write you another letter. Verse 2, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahuwah so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As, <laughs> as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. For you are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that <laughs> be darken are <laughs> drunken are drunken in the night. So don't think you're when you drink that you're trying to tell people, oh, you're drinking alcohol. He didn't say that. He's talking about you that know his name, but that's all you know. You're still drunk at night. You're drunk on your own satisfaction that you think because you talk about his name that that's it. Sorry, folks, I'm trying to tell you there's a strong trickery and a strong delusion that is coming. I'm going to give you the verse, Ephesians chapter 4. And we're, <coughs> we're getting to the end, Ephesians chapter 4. For ye henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sleet of man. Okay? <laughs> and the cunning thing 
cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And then the next verse is 2 Thess uh, Timothy 3.13. 2 Timothy 3.13. 2 Timothy 3.13. Second. Remember, there's two letters to Timothy. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. And I really appreciate all of you that take time to write it down and learn this. Because people have to know what they believe in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, is not, that's not going to secure them. That's not even going to save them with salvation. That's why we're trying to teach you the, <coughs> the calendar covenant of day so that you can merismoth divide the day from the Light. darkness. The day from the darkness. Okay, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Where's the trickery one at? Trickery was Ephesians 4.14. 4, I didn't read the word trickery. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you read it to me. That's why I'm saying I didn't read that. And I read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. So you must have a different uh, translation. That's why. What do you have? Oh, okay. I have King James. Let me see what the Scripture Bible. When you're not sure and you have a Scripture Bible, go to your Scripture Bible. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Ephesians 4, 14. So that we should no longer be children tossed, tossed and bore about by every wind of teaching by the trickery of men in cleverness unto the craftiness of lean, leading, listen to this, unto the craftiness of leading astray people. But maintaining the truth in love, we grow up in all respects into him who is the head, Yeshua Mashiach, Messiah. Trickery is in the Scripture Bible. Trickery is also in the New King James. New King James. I wanted Josh to say because that's what he used. I have no problem with it. I use Old King James and Scripture. Okay, so that was the last verse. And then I want to... <laughs> Jesus, there's so much. Hallelujah. Anyway, verse 14 in Second. Uh, Timothy 3, 13 and 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yeshua Mashiach. That word faith there is emunah. All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahuwah and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It gives you an inspiration that is profitable for to you for doctrine, reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness. Everything in that verse causes you to have a right standing, a right revering of the spirit. Since he is a spirit, you are a spirit. And John 4, let me see, is it 428? But it says the true worshiper must worship him in spirit and in truth. So let me go over to the book of John to see for, for the verse, chapter 4. Hallelujah. And it's, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, 
The hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour comes and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father, Yahuwah, in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yahuwah is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Father, I thank you this evening. I thank you for the words. I thank you that this was a pre-recorded message for the family that will see this on Saturday. I want you all to be aware to say a prayer for uh, Josh and Robert, his father, as they journey. They'll be back, and we want them to be totally covered by apostolic government, divine covering, no sickness, no harm, no enemy, no weapon formed against them will prosper in every tongue that rises up against them, you will curse. No father, no mother, no grandparents, no aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, no enemies shall raise a tongue up against them because of jealousy, because of anger, because of doubt and unbelief because of a different view, a different interpretation. We thank you, Father, and for every tongue that rises up against them, put their tongue, stop it to the roof of their mouth and let them feel and see your judgment in Yahuwah's name. I say it from the anointing of an apostolic governmental foundational father, I thank you that you'll protect them coming and going, going and coming. Not one hair on their head that falls in the shower, in the air, will come against them. Every idea, every thought that rises up against them, you will bring to naught, according to your word, Father. And if they believe it, they'll see it happen in their sight because nothing shall be held from them according to your word. We thank you, Father, because they're not children being tossed to and fro. They're sons and daughters of the Most High. Therefore, they walk in this understanding. All of you tonight, I pray that you have rest, that you have sweet dreams and undisturbed composure, that there's dreams of love and tranquility, that you see the basics of the foundations of Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, that nothing shall harm you, not one iota, that you walk with surety, sure-footed, like Joshua, wherever your tr feet tread, he will give you that land. In Yeshua's name we pray and we all say, Amen. I mean, until we see each other again, I want to thank you again for coming on. Don't forget to come back and see us uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday for Terabyte and In Tune with the Triune. And, of course, we have uh, the Virginia who left a legacy for those that come on and watch and learn and be in tune to the ear, even if you've heard it before. If you see it by the Spirit and let the Spirit inspire you, like we read in <coughs> 2 Timothy 3, it's inspiration. All Scripture is given by inspiration. It's an inspiration. Why? Because you have to alert all your faculties to be ready with expectation to receive from the Word. Until we see each other again, we want to love on you, pray for all of you. May financial increase, streams of, of covenant, <laughs> harvest, fest come your way. No sickness shall come upon your dwelling place. We want to thank Yahuwah for Psalms 91, Psalms 23 and 29. Hallelujah. We'll see you soon. 
and have a wonderful weekend as you're preparing. Don't get caught up in the Thanksgiving celebration of the carnal feast with a fat turkey. If you cook one, do it beforehand. Do it as a thanksgiving to Yahuwah Mashiach, the father and the son relationship. Give them thanks for your uprisings and your downsettings. When you're abasing and abounding, always give them thanks. Don't think the money that you have, you did it. You made it. Your father gave it to you. And like he gives it to you, he can take it from you. You know, I know people, family members, millionaires died with nothing, yet they had everything. Father, don't play, man. You can't be a liar and you can't be a thief. It's better to think that you're rich and spend it all now because when you get there, you ain't going to have nothing but eternal life. So don't forget, if you can be a blessing to someone, bless them. Don't do things for yourself. Always think esteeming others better than yourself. You know, the lights and the power went out in our area, and some people are still without power. Ask your family, do you guys need help? Anything I can do for you? Can I pray? Is there any needs? Just remember, we're here to esteem others better than ourselves. Until we see each other again, may Yahuwah. Baruch you and keep you because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you until the end. Till we see each other again, shalom. Let's not get hurt. You know what we're called to do? Yes, to bring an anointing.